Hey, what's up, guys? It's Apollo Uchiha here, back with another part of What If Naruto was separated from his family. And before continuing this, I have already uploaded the next part of What If Naruto was raised by the Sanin. If you haven't checked that out, please check that out as well. And if you haven't, please leave a like and subscribe to my channel. And without further ado, let's continue our story. The people of Uzushio Gakure started their day early and went decorating for today's events and tomorrow's as well. They have been told that there will be a double celebration as today was October the 10th, Naruto Uzumaki Namekaze's birthday and yesterday was the day he returned to Uzushio. They didn't throw a celebration yet since the Uzukage's family wished to enjoy their day with their lost and now found family members first. Everywhere in the village had been decorations for celebration, flags with the number of 5 on it with a cake background can be seen throughout the village. Signifying Naruto's fifth birthday with the whole village that was preparing for it. The birthday boy was still asleep in his room at that time. Hmm, I'm a chan. This is so good. Naruto mumbling is in his sleep. His parents and his siblings walked into his room carrying a cake, a bowl of ramen, party poppers, and banners, and was about to wake him up when they heard him mumbling naturally. They were horrified when they heard the five-year-old boy mumbling something good about a girl. Ah, that was good. I like a second round, I am a chan. Naruto said as he continued to talk into his sleep. What the? Kami, no! What happened to my innocent baby boy? Jiraiya, I'm going to kill you. Kushina thought. Minato was having mixed emotions. He wasn't sure if he should laugh or be angry. Naruto's siblings, however, were trying hard not to laugh, while their mother looked horrified. I am a chan. Ichiraku ramen is the best. This is indeed the food of gods. I will always eat here. Can I have a third bowl? Naruto asked in his sleep. His siblings and his father burst out laughing while Kushina looked relieved and soon she joined laughing while Naruto enjoyed having dreams in ramen as well. Ramen, my love, Naruto mumbled at the smell of ramen that was being held by his mother reached his nostril. Naruto-kun, his mother called. Mmm, Naruto-kun, more ramen, wake up, huh, it's your birthday. Your birthday? Happy birthday to you, Naruto sang still asleep. No, it's your birthday, silly. Kushina giggled. Happy birthday to me then. Kushina laughed. Naruto could wake up. Finally, Naruto woke up. Kachan, Tochan, Nechans, Nisans, good morning. Good morning to you, Naruto kun. They all replied, Happy birthday. My birthday? Naruto was smiling. His eyes widened as realization hit him was his birthday. It was his birthday. Bad memories came flooding back as he shook his head and started to panic. No, no, please, don't hurt me. Please don't leave me alone. I, I, I haven't done anything wrong. I'm not a demon. Go away. Please. Naruto cried as he tried to hide himself in a corner, covering his fear. His family stopped, decided, and dead in its tracks as they watched him. Oh my god, what have they done to him? My baby, Kushina whispered as a mother, the pain she felt was double, watching her son covering in fear during his birthday, when he was supposed to be happy, broke her heart. Naruto-kun, his sibling asked with concern. Naomi and Miho also started to cry for their little brother. Minato's mind was racing, his blood boiled. What have they done to my son? The village that I laid my life for did this? I'm going to kill them. I'm going to kill them all. Konoha, you're going to burn. Consciously, he released a huge amount of killing intent that made his son cry even more. Please don't hurt me. Naruto pleaded as he felt a huge amount of killing intent. His mind brought him back to Konoha and started to see a huge mob trying to kill him. Tosan, please calm down. You're scaring Naruto-kun even more, Minako said as he tried to calm his father. His father was shaking with rage. Minako and Miho also seated but managed to calm themselves down for the sake of their brother. The mother was the first to recover, although she still felt heartbroken seeing her son like that. naruto please don't cry. We're not going to hurt you. Kushina tried to comfort her son as she slowly approached him. Ka-san, is, is that you? Naruto asked as he felt someone approach him. Yes, naruto it's Ka-chan. Kushina said as she took, at, she took her son into her arms, hugging him tight. Ka-chan, they're going to kill me. They're going to kill me, Kachan. I swear I haven't done anything wrong. Tell them I'm not a demon, please. Tell them to stop hurting me. Naruto sobbed. I will, Sochi. I will. They won't hurt you anymore. You're safe. I promise I won't let them hurt you. The day was supposed to start off good, but Naruto family didn't realize how deep this wound and fears were. 
Krishna then recalled Naruto's medical files. When Kaede gave it to her, more than 25% of them were dated October the 10th. Promise? Yes, Sochi Kun. That's a promise of a lifetime. Believe it. Okay, replied the boy as he finally smiled, believing the words of his mother. Now, Naruto Kun, you should blow the candles and make a wish. Minato indicated the cake as he tried to light in the candle. Yeah, and your ramen is getting cold, Naomi said. Naruto's stomach re- replied with a growl. Oh yeah, I dreamed I was eating ramen. Narumi and Miho giggled. Yeah, we heard you. We also had the ramen cooked by Ayamachan for you. I'm sure you'd love it. Of course, Tate Bayo. Naruto cheered getting back to his usual happy and cheery self. His family sang happy birthday song and then the boy blew the candle. Naruto then began eating the huge bowl of ramen. In few minutes, the bowl was empty. Shiraku ramen is really the best. Of course, Tate Bane. You can have more later on. Let's go downstairs and get you prepared for today's event. Oh yeah, naruto have you prepared your speech yet? I'm sure the girls in the village would like to hear your speech, especially Ayame. Minako asked while his other siblings snickered. What? I thought Naruto Minachan said that it was a joke. Naruto pouted as he blushed with the thoughts of Ayame wanting to listen to his speech. It was. <laughs> his siblings laughed. Enough of that. You four, let's go downstairs. Kushina scolded as she carried Naruto and left the room followed by Minato. The four soon followed after their parents while still snickering. The little brother was it's so easy to tease. Hello Naruto Kun, happy birthday. A man who looked like Kushina created the boy as they reached the living room. It was the same man Naruto saw with his father before they teleported to Ushio. Beside the man was a boy who looked the same age as Narumi. His hair was long touching his shoulder blades. Like most of the Uzumaki, he too had red hair. Um, hi. Thanks. I haven't meant introduced myself, haven't I? I'm your uncle. You can call me Uncle Kaide. I'm your Kajian's elder brother. With me is your cousin Nagato. The two with him are his best friends, Konan and Yahiko. Naruto noticed two other people besides Nagato. The girl had blue hair tied into a bun, while the other boy had orange hair. Somehow, he almost looked like Naruto. Hello, cousin. Slash Naruto san. Happy birthday. Nagato and Yahiko greeted. Hello Naruto-kun, I'm Conan, but you can call me Conan-chan. Happy birthday. Naruto was still feeling a little cautious. He wasn't used to see people being nice to him and greeting him on his birthday, but he still managed to smile and thank the people who greeted him. He could start getting used to people being nice to him. After all, they weren't Konoha. He curiously inspected the four people and his eyes landed lost and rested on Konoha's, Conan's beautiful ha- face. Oh my god, you're so cute. Conan squealed as she rushed and hugged the boy, pressing his head to her glorious orbs. Naruto's face immediately went red. Fortunately, Kushina went to Naruto's rescue and managed to release him from the girl's grasp as he was starting to have difficulty in breathing. He was still blushing while Konoha released him. Is our Ototo blushing? Look, his face is red, Miho and Mio both said. Oh, could it be that our Naruto-kun has a crush on Konan-chan? Narumi asked. Look at him, he's blushing. Of course he does, Minako said as they laughed. Ah, does you really do you really have to tease me with every girl I meet? The youngest brother said. Yes, the sibling said in unison. Naruto quickly parted as his eyes seemed to get bigger. Conan found his blue eyes very attractive and couldn't hesitate to the boy's cuteness. So adorable, beautiful. It's like the face of an angel. Kamisama, thank you for letting me meet him. Conan whispered before she fainted. All of them stared at the girl unconscious form. My Naruto-kun, you really are ladies man. I'm so proud. Minato thought. Wow, like father like son, Kaede thought. Meanwhile, Kushina were having troubles. She was thinking about of ways to keep the girls away from her baby boy. He's only five, Tatebane. I'm not letting them take my naruto away from me. Not now. Yaiko, it seems you have competition. Naruto re- Nagato remarked as he found the scenes amusing. Oh no, not you two. Naruto shouted almost crying at Nagato. The whole family laughed at the scene while Naruto's face grew redder. All right, let's have breakfast. Everyone gathered around the dining table. Kushina decided to interrupt before things escalated. Two hours later, Naruto was now wearing a light blue kimono as his hair was being fixed by Kushina. Ugh, does this ever go down? Kushina asked in frustration as she tried to get her son's hair to go down. I guess it's just like mine. Let it be. Minato said, but he needs to be looking formal, get down. 
Kushina shouted at her son's stubborn hair. Looks fine to me. Ugh. Okay, I give up. Come on, Naruto-kun. Your uncle is waiting for you downstairs. He said he's going to give you something. Do you think he's going to be alright? Kushina whispered to her husband as they went downstairs with Nar Naruto going first. He'll be fine. Minato replied, although he was looked unconvinced. They worried about what happened earlier. I'll be fine, Kachan. Tochan. Do not worry about me. Naruto told his parents, having heard them talking about him. He gave them one of his foxy grins, making his parents smile back. Although he didn't really understand what his parents were worried about him for, Uzukage's mansion bulkly. The whole of Uzushio Gakure gathered at the bottom of the mansion, civilians and shinobis alike. Some were carrying banners that said, Welcome home, but happy birthday, and we love you, Naruto-sama. They were anxiously waiting for the Uzukage and her family, and especially the lost Maelstrom. They were talks about different things. Some of the shinobi were wondering if they're finally revealing themselves to the world. Some of the civilians were just talking happily that Naruto came back safe. The young girls were gossiping excitedly. Those who have seen Naruto were telling their friends how cute and charming he was. The boys, on the other hand, were talking about his awesomeness. Finally, it, the Uzumaki no Mikaze family appeared, all wearing kimonos. With them were the head of the storm, Kaire, and his son, Nagato. Four members of the family households were at the back, waiting for orders or to give assistance. There were also nine top members of storm stationed at the balcony, surrounding the family. The Uzukage stepped forward and immediately everyone became silent as they waited for her to talk. People of Uzushio Gakure, I thank you all for coming here and celebrating with us. My heart is filled with gratitude seeing you all concerned with our family. Four years ago, an allied force of Iwa, Kumo and Kiri tried to eliminate us. We found out that Konoha was also to blame for the attack. Despite our victory, we still suffered heavy losses. An unknown assailant infiltrated the mansion and took my infant son away. We were all made to believe that he was killed by incentration. Four years we mourned for the loss of my son. We shared my pain and my sorrow. For that I will be forever thankful to each and every one of you. The crowd cheered and felt happy hearing their Uzukage thank them. They went silent again as their leader continued her speech. A few nights ago, I, my husband and my four children had shared a dream. We saw a boy being beaten and tortured by a mob. We saw how those people hated the boy when he had done nothing wrong to deserve what they were giving him. We recognized the boy and we believed it was actually happening and decided to find him. I ordered my children and my brother to come to Konoha and look for him. My brother came back and confirmed his findings about the boy. What we saw in the dream, my brother also saw it in that village. He came back with documents about the boy confirming that was he was indeed my lost son Naruto. Every single person here, I'm sure, were informed about the reports and documents. After the meeting with the council, we have decided to let the news spread to everyone living in the Uzushio. I know many of you demand blood when you found out what Konoha did to my son. And for that, as a mother, I once again thank you. The Uzushio, the Uzukage bowed in front of Uzushio as the crowd murmured and returned the bow. She then continued. When my son was found, we immediately made plans to have him returned here safely. A decision was made and every shinobi volunteered for the raid that has been agreed upon. Five raiding teams were formed and went to Konoha to fulfill their missions. The mission operation lost Maelstrom, retrieved Naruto, Uzumaki, Namikaze and returned the kindness that Konoha had given us. Both missions were successful. My son was able to safely return and the raiding squads gave Konoha a piece of our gratitude. Konoha didn't know and still have no leads on the attack that occurred to them. They blamed the other shinobi countries who attacked our homeland four years ago. They believed that they were the ones responsible. The crowd laughed and jeered at Konoha's stupidity. The Uzukage raised her hand and the crowd went silent once again. I know you have been waiting to meet him ever since the news spread. I will not make you wait any longer. People of Uzushio Gakure, meet the lost Bealstrom, my son, Uzumaki Namikaze, Naruto. The crowd cheered as the youngest here stepped forward and presented himself to everyone. He smiled and waved at them. They happily returned the gesture and the blonde felt overwhelmed but happy. Naruto-sama, welcome back. We have been waiting for you. Since we heard the news, we're happy you're doing well, Naruto-sama. Uzushio Gakure loves you. Naruto felt so welcomed. He started to stare at the crowd as he gave them a foxy grin. He looked at a bit uncomfortable and shuffled his feet, but then he held out his hand 
and the crowd went silent for a moment. Um, hello, people of Uzushio Gakure. Uh, thank you for uh, the warm welcome. I uh, promise that I will do my best so you will all like me. I will do what I can to become a good role model as the son of the Uzukake. Thank you. His family was, of course, surprised that he even managed to make a short speech. They were nonetheless proud of him. The crowd busted again into cheers and applause. Narada-sama, you are so cool. Please sign me as your autograph. Narada-sama, Narada-sama. Demon, go away. Die, you demon brat. Demons have no place here. Go back and die in a ditch. Bad memories started to haunt him as he started to stare at the huge crowd. He remembered back in Kona, a huge crowd always gathered against him and did unspeakable things to him. He unconsciously made a step back while clutching his head. The crowd were confused as they watched the boy face turn into a scared look from a happy look. Their Narasama was now cowering in fear. They didn't understand why. No, please, don't hurt me. I'm not a demon. Can't you see that? Go away. The young hare screamed as he curled into a ball, shaking and crying. Oh my, my baby, Kushina said as a tear fell down to her cheek. She immediately recovered and nodded to her other children. Narumi and Minako carefully approached their little brother and guided him back inside the mansion. No, please don't hurt me. I haven't done anything wrong. The boy sobbed as he felt warm presence. Narumi hugged her little brother and carried him away back to the mansion, closely followed by Minako and the twins. The Uzukage also ordered her household to assist her children. The crowd watched as the crowd watched them sadly as Naruto was taken back inside the mansion. They now realized what happened to the boy. The crowd began murmuring to their cells and watched as their Uzukage stepped forward and faced them once again. Uzukage sama, Uzukage sama, is this the work of Konoha? How could they do this to someone so innocent? Konoha must pay for their crimes. Konoha must burn. Let us all do and return the favor for what they have done to Naruto sama and to us. Yeah, blood for blood, an eye for an eye. Fuck you, Konoha. Blood, blood. Uzukage's mind was racing. The people demanded blood. She too wanted revenge for her son and for Uzushio Gakure. But no, they were still hidden and needed to become stronger. She wanted her son to get stronger first before they exact their vengeance on Konoha. Her father, the previous Uzukage, still had plans that needed to be done. She must do those first before they decided to remerge back to the world. She made a resolve and ordered the crowd to become silent. My burthen, I understand your desires for blood. As a mother, I wanted nothing but paid for those responsible for my son's misfortunes. But no, as your leader, I must keep a straight and clear mind. We will go to war, yes, but not yet. All eyes were on her now. Uzushiogakure still remains hidden to the world the Uzumaki clan were extinct. But Uzushiogakure and the Uzumaki clan are very much alive. We are bidding our time and are getting ourselves become stronger. We are gathering allies while becoming discreet. We are also making research for war machines that will help us in the future once we finally decide to re-emerge back to the world. We will remind them why we were feared. They were right to fear us. But deciding to exterminate us was never a great idea. We only have a few years left lying low before we decide to reappear. When the time comes, the world will know true fear. We will make them pay. Everyone, shinobi and civilians alike, roared their approval and cheered. For the last time, their leader raised her hand and they went silent again. Today is my son's fifth birthday. Let us celebrate his return and forget about his oppressors for now. Also, I must ask of you to not mention about his status when he is around. He doesn't know yet about the QB no Yoko being sealed inside him yet. Let us celebrate. Let the world celebrate, for this will be one of their last celebrations. The lost Millstrom has returned to his homeland, and when the time comes, Uzuchiyo Gakure will rule the world. And with that, Kushina and Minato retreated back to the mansion to check on their son, while Kade and his Strom went back to their duties. The crowd cheered and roared their approval for their leader's word. Uzukage's mansion. How is my baby boy doing? Kushina asked as she entered her son's room and found him sleeping with Miho and Mio inside, beside him. He is doing fine now. It took him 10 minutes before he finally calmed down and believed he was safe from harm. The crowd really did scare him and brought back bad memories. Minako said as he stood up and let his mother approach Naruto. Kasan, Tosan, what are we going to do? Narumi asked. Just give him time. Time heals wounds. Well, not really. The scars will remain, but yeah, you'll catch my drift. Minato replied. Yes, we will just show him. 
if we love him. The villagers will also see that. He will overcome his fears if given the time. The fear will drive him to become stronger in the future. That fear will be converted into his ultimate weapon where no one will be able to do him harm again. Konoha will see to that. I promise, Kushina said. The mother raised her hand and one of the servants approached. Yes, Suzukage-sama, can the four of you go to the Ushiraku ramens and order 30 bowls of Kushina special ramen and bring it back here? Hi, Uzukaki-sama. Thank you. Just tell Tenoichi san to put the bill in our tab. Ramen helps me with depression. That the money. Naruto kun's favorite food is also ramen. I'm sure it will cheer him up when he wakes up. Kushina said, answering her eldest daughter and son question looking. Kushina and Minato and his siblings stayed with Naruto until he woke up and about an hour later. Naruto kun, how are you feeling? His father asked. Mm -mm, fine. Sochi, you don't sound fine. Please tell me, mommy what's on your mind. Kushina said as she held his son's hand. Naruto remained silent for a minute as he stared at the window. There was something that still bothered him. He was pondering if he should ask his parents. Kaasan, Tochan, asked Naruto Gun, do you really love me? Kushina and Minato looked at each other. Naruto's sibling looked surprised at the question. Of course, Sochi, why would you think otherwise? Well, you didn't try to look for me when I was kidnapped. I was dumped into Konoha and my life was made very miserable. Kushina looked like she had been sucker punched. She felt speechless. She reached for her son and tried to hug him. Naruto, I'm so sorry. I was so scared back then. I became depressed for a year. After that, I tried to live my life normally. Father prohibited me from going out to look for you. We had to lay low for a while. We tried tracking your signature, but we couldn't. We believe you were really dead. Forgive us, Naruto. Please forgive your Kachan. Kushina sobbed. Kachan, I'm still scared. Naruto, Naruto also felt speechless. What if they come back? What if they find out about me? What if they take me back again? What will you do? Naruto, we are very sorry for letting you go that easily. Ever since that night we dreamt about you, I have been feeling that you were alive and living with the regret every day. He asked myself every day, what if I actually tried to look for you and then you wouldn't have experienced your misfortunes in life. You wouldn't have lived your first year in life in fear of being mistreated. I'm so sorry, Kushina explained while her tears still flowed down. Naruto could forgive me as well. It was my fault. I was the one who sealed Minato stopped himself. He almost spilled and told him about QB. Please forgive us, Naruto -kun. We promise to become better parents for you and your siblings, Naruto -kun. We promise you. Konoha will never come back. They will not take you away again. If they do find out about you, we will do everything we can to stop them for getting their hands on you. If it comes to for the need, then we will kill them as well. We will not hesitate. We love you, Naruto -kun. We will protect you. That's a promise? Yes, Naruto -kun. We promise. Kushina said as she hugged her son tighter. They remained silent for about five minutes, just hugging each other before Naruto finally smiled. Kachan, Tochan, yes, Naruto kun, I want to become a ninja. I want to become strong. If Konoha comes for me, I will be able to defend myself. I also want to become strong to be able to protect Uzushi Ogakure from her enemies. Can you enroll me to the academy? His family smiled at his proclamation. Of course, Naruto kun, we want you to become strong. We'll let you join the academy if that's what you wish, Kushina said as she released her son and put her hands on his cheeks. Naruto cheered. Um, may I have the ramen now? His parents chuckled as Minato nodded and gave him a bow. Naruto's problem was finally solved in the morning. He continued celebrating his birthday and went outside to greet and thank the villagers. He spent his afternoon roaming the village. He received many gifts from the villagers. He got new clothes, new books, and ninja tools. Some of the shinobi gave him a set of real kunais and shurikens. He received books from the bookstore owner, Nana. Naruto received 25 eat all you can ramen from free coupons 590% off ramen coupons from Tenoichi and a kiss from Ayame which left him dazed for about an hour. Nagato and his two best friends Yahiko and Conan gave him a black robe with red clouds designed on it a pair of katanas and another kiss from Conan and that made the boy became dazed for another hour. His uncle Kaide gave him a tanto. His siblings gave him a set of 
standard Ushio Shinobi clothing and weapons. While his parents gave him books about Fuenjutsu and Ninjutsu, his family received a dinner invitation from the owner of the most expensive restaurant in Ushio. His fifth was his greatest birthday ever. The next day, Ushio Gakure Council meeting, Uzukage sama we are almost finished conducting research and experimenting of our machineries. In two years' time, we will be producing our first battle tanks, airships, warships, and submarines. Also, in six months, our first batch of light and heavy artillery will be ready for testing. A man wearing white robes reported he was one of Uzushio's best scientists. They were working on advanced machineries that will be of greater use in the future. It is our first batch of machinery proves to be success, we will need to ally with the land of metal to be able to produce more of these war machines. If we're to look for allies, the land of iron can be very helpful to us in trade and additional military power. The council was glad to hear of the research team progress. They also approved the idea of Ushio allying with the metal country. That's a great proposition. I'll begin working to get in touch with the land of metals, Daimyo and Kage discreetly. Is there anything else? Yes, Uzukage-sama. We are also thinking of Amegakure. Oh yeah, hold it. The Uzukage said as she snapped her fingers calling a storm. Please find Nagato, Yahiko and Konan and tell them to proceed here immediately. Hi, the storm said as he vanished in a swirl of leaf. Ten minutes later, Uzukage-sama, what is it? Nagato asked as he entered, meeting room with Yahiko and Konan. We were talking about which countries to get to ally with us, and Amegakure was mentioned. The Uzukage replied as she nodded to the council and resumed her meeting. As you can see, rain country served as a battleground during the war. The country was naturally destroyed and became a poor country. They are now being led in tyranny by a clan known to produce poison from their bodies. Their leader was known as Hanzo of the Salamander, head of the Hattori clan. He was the person who fought the three legendary Sani and was the one who gave them their titles. Amino Kuni serves as a buffer zone of Konoha and the other elemental nations. If we can negotiate and ally with them, we will have an advantage point when the time comes and we will have a shorter route when we invade the other elemental countries. I can see your point, but there will be no negotiations. My sources tell me that Hanzo is a good friend of Danzo who is from Konoha. We are Going to have the elim we are going to have to eliminate them before we occupy and rule Ame, said by another council member. But how are we going to do that? Uzukage sama said we cannot attack other countries yet and remain hidden. Asked by another one. I have seen to that matter already, Kushina said. What are you planning, Uzukage sama the Akartsuki. She smiled and Nagato, Yahiko and Konan eye widened in surprise. What? Akartsuki what? What do you mean? The council asked. Kushina nodded to her nephew and his two companions as they step forward. Akatsuki is what we call our group, Yahiko said. Like everybody else, it is our desire to achieve peace. Conan continued, in order to achieve true peace, the world must know and feel pain. Nagato finished. You see, the reason why I called them here is because of Amegakure. They will be our means of having Ame no Kuni added to our land, expansion and military mates. Nagato Yahiko and Conan, I will be sending you three on a long-term mission. You will infiltrate Ame and pose as members of that place. You will have no trouble convincing people since Conan and Yahiko were originally from there. I believe there is a resistance in there. Find the rebels and use Akartsuki to invite them to your cause. Gather as much members and follow you can. When you are ready, overthrow the leader and claim the country. Eliminate all loyal followers of them. We will send you for Uzushiogakure Shinobis as a reinforcement every two weeks once you find the rebels and convince them to join your cause. I will strong faith in you three. Prepare to leave in a week. Thank you for trusting us, Uzukage-sama. We will not fail you and we will make sure to fulfill our promise. I, will, I know you will. The Uzukage replied as the three left the room. Alright, Amegakure will be taken care of. Anything else? Hi. Two years ago, there had been an uprising in Yuki no Kuni. Yuki's former daimyo, Sosetsu, Kazehana was murdered by his own brother, Doto Kazehana. Doto hired a group of mercenary shinobi and took over the place. Satsu's daughter 
Kyoki managed to escape along with the hexagon crystal, which they believe was the key to Yuki no Kuni's hidden treasures. Our sources managed to unveil the treasure it was. The treasure was actually a heat generator for the whole country, which will melt the snow and turn the weather into spring. Like Ame no Kuni, Yuki no Kuni is under control of a tyrant. Toto and his little group of mercenaries were wear what they call chakra armor. These suits enhance their jutsus tenfold and also make them immune to jutsus. Whenever hit by a jutsu, their armor will absorb it and convert it into chakra for the wearer to use. The wearer, the wearer will also never experience chakra exhaustion since the armor drastically reduces the chakra required for a jutsu. A few weeks ago, we managed to acquire one of the armors, newest models, and have it looked in our laboratories to further study about it and find its weakness. For now, we are still looking for the Princess Kyoki, but we will have no leads till now, one of them reported. Very good. I want a team sent to Snow Country and have find Sosetsu, Kazehana's loyal followers. The team will stay there with them until we find Princess Kyoki and help her retake the country. Uzukage-sama, what of Sunagakure? I have sent them a letter two days ago. By yesterday, the Kazegage should have received it. Hopefully, we'll have his answer within the next week. I have sent them the letter and the other necessary documents to further convince them to ally with us. Uzushi Ogakure's council recently discovered more news regarding Konoha's treacherous plan. They found out about their plans against Sunagakure. They were planning to do almost the same thing they have done with their former ally, Uzushio, whom they betrayed and left. The plan was to ally with Suna first and gain their trust. Once the alliance was made, they will find and spill the village military secrets and weaknesses to the other elemental countries. Allowing Suna to be attacked easily once weakened, they will take their village in Churiki, Sabuko, Nagara and add him to Kona's own military arsenal. The plan to do so, the same thing they did to Naruto, beating, torturing and slowly brainwashing the young Jinchuriki to make them loyal to the village. Ugh, I can't believe Kona stooping so low and playing dirty. One of the council members remarked, Oh, how the mighty have fallen. Another month said, They will reap for this, so don't you forget that. Tazukage said, What about Takigakure? I'm afraid Takigakure has been taken out of the list of our allies. We found out what they were doing to the Chinchuriki. They followed Kona's example. Takigaru Takigakure also hit the Chinchuriki. We can't ally to those who treat their own like trash. They will fall like Konoha. Kushina said coldly, there is also this history with one of their rogue ninjas. A man named Kakasu was sent on an assassination mission to assassinate Konoha's Shodai Hokage but failed greatly. Unable to defeat the Moketan, he turned to Taki and reported his failure mission. What happened next was completely outrageous. They punished the man. He was sent to jail and was tortured every day for three months before he was released and was tasked again to assassinate the same person whom he had been tasked to kill, Hashirama Senju. Naturally, the man was angry at his village. Uh, for the treatment he received, he murdered the village elders and took their hearts. He also took the village's most prized forbidden technique before he fled. Uzukage-sama, if we are not aligned with Takigakure for how they treat their own be shinobi, then why are we aligned with Suna? Ah yes, the Yondam Kazekage, the Jurki's father, is indeed a cunt. He tried to have his son assassinated. Countless time, their counsel was no different, but we have a plan for that. Once the alliance between Uzushio Gakure and Suna Gakure is made, we will have the one responsible for making Kara's life miserable murdered brutally. They will be replaced by people with good hearts. Since the council and the Kazakake are the only persons who hate Kara, we will not have much problem. The villagers will actually good people, but only grew afraid of the Jinjuriki because of his unstable seal. Once we fix the boy's seal, we will show Suna they can trust him and do not have to be afraid of him. I also have plan on him staying here in Uzushia to be friend with my son Naruto. They can relate to each other, having the same rough childhoods and status as Jinjuriki. I see, that's a plan. A good one at that, Uzukage-sama. What are we going to do about Taki's Jinjuriki? I'm sending a team to find her and convince her to run away from Taki. It should be easy. Once Taki lists her as a missing nin, we will take her under our protection. Is there anything else? Then we should adjourn this meeting, if there isn't. Uzukage-sama, we wish Naruto-sama a belated happy birthday. Here are our gifts. The council said as they presented their gifts for their young heir to the Uzukage. Two strong members took the gifts and brought them to the mansion. Thank you. We will talk again once we receive Suna's response. Dismissed. Hi. The council member said as they stood up and left the room. Konohagakure. 
Two days have passed since the incident and instead of being able to rise up and recover from the raid, Konoha faced many problems. The village elders Danzo, Shimura, Koharu, Utatane and Hamura Mikto Kaido were found unconscious one day after the attack on the village. They were immediately rushed to the hospital in fear of them dying. The village doctors and healers found nothing wrong with them. The ch their chakra coils were normal. Their organs showed no sign of malfunctioning. Their bodies were completely unhealthy. Yet they were still baffled on their patients' current conditions. Teams were sent to investigate the elders' houses and they were able to find residues of very, very strong and potent dose of sleeping pills all over their drinks and foods. To investigation, teams gathered the residues to be studied in the hospital, but later found out that the metal slowly vanished into nothingness, leaving no trace when exposed to air. They were able to re realize this when there was nothing left to study. This left them very frustrated and was forced to just wait for the elders to wake up since they found their bodies and brains perfectly healthy. Then concluded they were simply put into a coma. The whole village, on the other hand, was put into a very shitty situation. The place tank of human waste. Every, every single person in the village had been diagnosed with a very strong and unique kind of diarrhea. The comfort rooms were always full of the infected and had very long lines. Those who were unfortunate enough which was many had no choice but to release their bowels on the road, the park or anywhere place they were. The doctors, through their own exper experiences, were able to determine the disease. The person infected will experience the same symptoms of diarrhea. What made it different from the normal diarrhea was that the body of the person infected will automatically replenish their lost waters and will keep them from becoming dehydrated. But because of the body being forced to replenish lost water, the infected person become very weak, though infected by the disease. Teams were formed to investigate the cause of the pandemic and found out that the village's water tank were mixed with many amounts of laxatives. They had no choice but to gather water outside the village and left traces of human waste along the roads. Because of the raid, a few missions and contract givers became hesitant to hire Konoha. This caused the village to have a lower source of income. The missions givers and contractors distractically decreased when they found out about the whole village infected with a strong and unique kind of diarrhea. Merchants and traders also avoided the village in fears of getting infected. News about the plot traveled fast. Only the Daimyo and Daimyo's family, the people who lived near and inside the fire capital, and those who really needed something from Konoha kept their businesses with them. Konoha's reputation went to totally fucked up from most trusted and respected. Sunagakure no Saro, the Yondem Kazikage, was surprised with the sudden increase of missions and comfort requested. When he heard about Kona, he was somewhat thankful for the slight increase of business when the news of Konoha Plus spread. 90% of that village business decided to look for another village to deal business with. The populace of Suna felt very sorry for Konoha in the inside but was very happy on the other side. Finally, more missions were taken. And they were happy. They will be more recognized. They will have more means of income. The Kazikage just finished assigning missions and was now signing papers. Kazikage sama. Asuna Jonin carrying a scroll suddenly entered the office. Yes. Here's another scroll from the unknown center. Oh, just leave it there. Thank you. Hi. The Kazikage finished his stack of paper and decided to open the scroll. And two folders pooped out of there. He decided to read the first scroll. Greetings, Kazikage Tono. Once again, we found like, w once again, we would like to offer you an alliance between our respective villages. We are sure that we will both benefit with it, and we assure you that your village will benefit greatly with it. As stated in our previous letter, you will have an increase in missions requests and other businesses such as trade and other contracts. There you have it. Kona's benefactors have decided to invest the your village is better than that. We must ask for your pardons if we cannot tell you who we are until you have agreed with the deal. We cannot reveal ourselves and our village, although we can assure you that our intentions align with you are true and we have no hidden agenda behind it. We will simply wish an alliance so both our villages can have more trading resources and military strength. You can attest our strengths by looking on what happened with Konoha. See how much damage we have done within only 30 minutes also attached with the scroll or documents regarding your treaty with Konoha and their plans for it. We have managed to recover these files during our raid. See for yourself. We hope that we could reach into a compromise and please you with your decision. We thank you in advance and wish you good fortune. 
in your search of incoming missions. Sunagakure's friend. The Kazekage smirked as he put down the scroll. Now he knew who was to thank for their sudden increase in economy. He also understood the hidden threat within the message. Should he decide to do something funny like decline their proposal or reveal about them to Konoha, the Kazekage understood and saw how powerful their mysterious friend was. If he approves of the alliance, his country will become stronger and will have the power to oppose the other four elemental nations and other strong countries. He had already decided to agree to the alliance while he was still reading the letter. There will be no need for threats. Of course, he will agree. His village has benefited a lot thanks to these mysterious people. The Kazekage then picked on the second folder attached with the scroll and opened it. His facial expression turned to anger from curiosity as he read the folder's contents. Inside the report was the progress report regarding Kona's proposed alliance to Suna. Stated there was Kona's true plans behind this post alliance. They were planning on friending the village to discover their secrets and military weaknesses and exploit them. They also planned about taking Suna's Jinchuriki and brainwashing him. They wanted to add the Shukaku to their military arsenal. Once they have gotten what they wanted, they will overthrow Sunagakure in Osato and with or without the help of the other nations. After reading the file, he knew there was no doubt he will accept Kona's mysterious attacker's proposal for an alliance. He definitely going to agree with it. Consequences of the alliance be damned. He'll think about those later. He will bring down Konoha with the help of this mysterious ally. The Kazekage picked up the second folder inside it was the alliance approval between his village and their unknown friend. On top of it, it was a note. This is the paper that will prove our alliance. Know that this paper is unfused with blood seals and truth seals. Everything written in here is true. Everything proposed about the agreement once signed will be done. There will be no backstabbing, pulling back or cancellation of the alliance. Failure to comply with the agreement will cause that of the one of who signed it, his successor, his successor, and his successor's successor, and so on. The contract will expire in 15 years. The choice is yours. If you wish to renew it, in which we are sure you will, since your country will benefit greatly with it. The sand leader was impressed with the paper. He didn't know such a kind of seal existed. He continued reading the contents. Both countries will benefit with each other. There will be a trade system between both villages, items that are usually found in the country's vicinity that cannot be found within their allied countries or areas will be shared equally or traded and vice versa. They will be sharing of knowledge about enemies' threats and future threats. There will be also a sharing of training and teaching methods in the academy to help both villages produce strong shinobi in the future. Lastly, there will be a sharing of each country's jutsus. These jutsus will be taught in the villages' respective academies. More importantly, there will be a military alliance. Should one of the villages call for assistance in a time of war or natural calamities or other problems, the allied village will respond and prove any assistance they can. Kazekage Dono, there is a personal favor I want to ask you, and I'm, I'll make it an addition to this agreement. You see, my son is also Jinchurki, who happens to be the same age as your son Gara. I would like you to approve to send him and his siblings to our village and let them stay for at least five years. My son has few friends around his age, and I wish him to grow up and become used to people near his age. Also, I like both children send, spend time around each other. Other since they are the, since they are both Jinchurikis, this is my personal request. I hope we can have an agreement on this. Please cut your wrist and let a small amount of blood touch the paper. Use your own blood to sign if you approve of our agreement and alliance. Sunagakure's ally. The, Kage, the Kazikage was a bit surprised with the request. He didn't expect the mysterious village to have their own Jinchuriki. He was shocked by their revelations. He wondered which tale they had. I'll find out soon. I see nothing wrong about their personal favor. If this is what it takes to get back to Konoha, sending my children to there is a simple price to pay. And I'm sure they will help my children train to grow stronger. Yes, I'll definitely approve of this. Konoha, you better pray to whatever gods starting from now on. From now on, Sunagakure have a stronger ally than you. The Suna leader thought as he cut his wrist with a kunai and a few droplets hit the paper. He then, he then took a pen and signed it with his blood. The moment he was finished signing, the paper glowed and a new folder appeared, along with a ring with a small sapphire on it, of it with a swirl design. There was also a note on top of the folder, Kazekage Dono. 
We knew we could trust you in Sunagakure. Thank you for agreeing to make an alliance with us and hope you will not let, let us down in the future. Be sure to ally with Suna since it was the only village who haven't done anything against Uzushio Kakure. The folder explains everything that has transpired four years ago up to the day Konoha was raided. We hope that all of your questions will be answered by this folder. If not, then simply concentrate your chakra on this ring. We strongly advise you to wear it all the time, starting from the moment our lance has been approved by you. Don't worry, there's nothing fancy on that ring. You won't die or feel any negative effects by wearing it. We simply do not want other people finding this ring. Do we? Of course not. This ring is a symbol of our alliance and also a communication device. It has been applied with seals. So all you have to do is layer your chakra on it and call on my name should you wish to speak or arrange a meeting with us. Once again, the whole village of Uzushiogakure appreciates your treaty with us. Kushina Uzumaki Namakase. Show that Uzukage no Atarashi Uzushiogakure no Sado. How many times have I said this? The Uzukage was shocked with the revelations. Uzushiogakure? Uzushiogakure still exists? Uzumakis? Kushina Uzumaki? They're alive. She's alive. They were the ones who attacked Konoha. But why? How are they? Okami, now my head hurts. The Suna leader thought as he massaged his head. He then shouted and called for his Anbu. Four of them appeared in front of him, kneeling. Anbu, I want the village locked down immediately. I want all possible entries to the village secured. Nobody is to get inside or outside. Also, have this room surrounded by four squads of the top Anbu. Secure the room and make sure nobody enters. Hi! The Kazakaze stood up and quickly went into a series of hand seals, applied the room with the strongest privacy seals he knew. Nobody from the outside will see, hear, or feel anything. He went back to his seat and began reading the contents of the folder. It took him almost two hours since he had to read the contents of the folder three times, as if memorizing it. All questions that had been lingering on his head was answered thanks to the information he read from the folder. He put down the file and took deep calming breaths. After about 10 minutes, he flared his chakra on the ring that was on his hand now. Uzushi Ogakure, Uzukage's office. The Uzukage was signing off papers as she felt a new chakra signature. She smiled and muttered, Well, that was unexpectedly fast. The Uzumaki leader snapped her fingers and two masked fingers. Two masked figures. Sorry, it's fingers written here. <laughs> Two masked figures who were kneeling appeared. Please find my husband and my brother and tell them to cover, come over here immediately. Hi, as this is where I'm going to be leaving this part of guys. I hope you like this one and if you do, please leave a like and subscribe to my channel. And this is Apollo Chia and I'm signing out. Peace.